Hi, this is Greg Koopman. In this video, I'm going to speak to you about how to copy a job from one project to another. Okay, here we are in Talent Open Studio, and there's four packages, or four or jobs rather, excuse me, packages comes from SSI, yes, there's four jobs here that I want to uh, export and then import into another project. Uh, in Talon, you can't just go ahead and have two projects open and, and just copy-paste this kind of stuff uh, from and to these uh, different projects. So basically, the way you, you can do it is you can export it. Now, you could export them one at a time, or you can export them all at once. I'm going to choose to export them all in one file. Okay, now remember, the export doesn't remove them from this project. It just makes a copy of them and puts them on, onto the disk, okay, where you later will pick it up and, and with an import routine and bring them into your other project. So you're not going to use copy here. You could copy these to and from itself, okay, so I could copy and I could then paste it in, in, into this, into another folder in this project if I want. Another easy way to do it is just go ahead and press duplicate. Okay, so I just got a duplicate, creates a copy. So you see the copy of this one, this one was replaced here. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually bring these into another project. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight them all by pressing my shift key down and uh, clicking on the top and bottom one. Right click, go to export items. From here, I'm going to select the archive file. Okay, which is going to create an archive. I'll we'll also check the export dependencies. I need the dependencies in there too. Now, what we want to do here, it's going to take the first name of the first file. I really don't want that. I want this to just to say something more simple, like export, import, and that's fine. That's all I want there. So now I'm going to say finish. And it's going to copy it, and it <laughs> there's no response that says it's finished or anything else. It just comes back, and it's a very the files are very small. Uh, let's import these four into the other project. Okay, I'm in my other project now, and as you see, those four are not in here. Okay, I also created a new folder called Extract Import just by right clicking on the uh, job designs and say Create Folder. So that's where I want to put them. So I'm just going to stay highlighted on that. I want to go to my import items. And under import items, I'm not going to go to select root directory. I'm going to go to select archive file. And I'm going to go to browse. And it brings up a, a path that is not where they are. So what I really, I know where they are. They're in the, my documents folder. Okay, so you'll get a date, date modified and there it is. Export import. Okay, so I open that, and what I get here is um, which ones do I want to bring in? Okay, I want to bring them all in. Okay, and that's it. Now, I could do overwrite existing items, so be careful there. Um, if you have something, you know, don't check. It's not checked, so you're kind of safe. Um, but if you do check it, you have to be careful, you know, in case you're overwriting something you really don't want to. So I'm going to hit finish. The import takes very little time, doesn't give you any screen that says it's finished. So we go over here to Extract Import Demo. I'm going to open that up. And lo and behold, they are all there. Okay, and uh, this is how you copy multiple jobs from one project to another. Okay, in these uh, next two scenarios, I want to show you, they're a little bit more complicated. Um, but Basically, we're going to talk about dependencies and when you bring the dependencies of the package over to your, uh, where you import it into another project, okay? So this is something you have to be careful of. And I've alluded to this in the prior, uh, in the prior scenario. Okay, so in this scenario, we have a package here, uh, rather a job, I'm sorry, um, that has a context associated with it. And the context has a context group associated with it. And it's called the SQL Server Context Group. So if we go over here, you'll see that SQL Server Context Group. Okay? So when we, when we go ahead and go to export this job, we will have the question posed to us. So let's go to this job which is commit, pull back, right? 
and we're going to export it. So we go to our export. I'll leave the name the same. But what I want you to notice here is that I have job designs and look what's checked. We have commit or rollback on job. That's the job and nothing else. Okay. But when I click dependencies, export dependencies, which that if you don't have the dependencies, that job won't work. Um, well, let's look down in here now after I click dependencies. Ah, under contest, it has a SQL Server context group checked. Okay, so what this is going to do is export both of these things. It's going to export the SQL Server context, which is all these guys down here, uh, along with the job itself. Okay, so which is fine. That's what we need for right now. But let me just let me just show you how this works. So we hit finish, and it does it export without giving us a success uh, dialog box, which we, for some reason they should do that. But anyways, um, so let's jump over to the other uh, to the other job. Okay, we're in the other project where we want to copy this job. Okay, or in this case, we want to import the job from that zip file. So I go to Job Designs, Import Items, go to my Archive File, Browse, go to my Documents file, folder, and here it is. Copy on and roll back. Okay, and here we just see this local project that doesn't really tell me much, right? So let me go ahead and click on my Overwrite Existing Items. Now it gives me more of the boxes that are relevant to that uh, file. So here, if I click them all, I get, here we go, there's that SQL Server, right? So what's it going to do? There's no SQL Server in the context over here, right? If we look at that, there's none here. Uh, but afterwards, I think there's going to be a SQL Server group, a context group over here. And of course, there'll be another commit. The commit rollback will be there. So let's hit finish. Doesn't look like anything's going to be disturbed by overwriting at this point because we don't have it anyways. We got to have it to, in order. So there's not much thinking going on here. So go finish. Sure enough, there's our SQL servers that's shown up here with all its. Let's see. Let's see if we can read context group. Next. Yep, there they all are. Right. I want you to take notice of this port 1433. Okay, port 1433. Cancel. And then here's our job. Double click on that. That will come up. Beautiful. Has our contacts, which points to the SQL Server group over here. Right? Okay, so that's what I want you to see. Now let's do let's do something. Let's change the SQL Server group in the original job. Okay, so I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna go over to my other job, the original job, right? And instead I, mean, I don't need to open this up. I'm just gonna go to SQL Server here. Uh, I'm going to edit that job. I'm going to go here. Instead of 1433, I'm going to make it 1500. Okay. Let's say that's an error. Okay, but we don't know it yet. And the last thing we want to do is push that to another person's project. Okay, this is saying all the jobs that are using this uh, this SQL Server context group. Do I want to cascade? Okay, that's fine. I'm not worry about it now because I'm going to go and change it back later. So. That's that. So let's go ahead and re-export this guy, which is the uh, commit rollback, right? Let's actually go look at it, make sure, see if the context has changed, because we changed it here. So globally, it should have changed. So as you see down in here, there's our SQL Server uh, port, and we changed it to 1500, which definitely isn't going to work in the real world. But anyways, let's go ahead and export this job again. So I'm going to go to job, I'm going to export items. I'm going to export dependencies, which will include that SQL Server group again, right? Right, and I'm going to I'm going to shoot it to the same folder I had it, the file I had it before. Finish. Does it you want to overwrite? Yeah, sure. Okay, finished. Okay, okay. We we'll jump back over to the other project, and now I'm going to go ahead and bring that import the, that again. So I'm going to import that same one. Documents. Same thing, overwrite, and look what we got. I got the context here. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. Now, if I don't bring it in this way and I undo the context, that 1433 will stay still stay in there, okay? Which might be the case. You need to be very cognizant of this to make sure you don't go and mess up everybody or your people who are importing this. You got to warn them that you know maybe you may maybe you're just using it for your development system and it's not going to match their development system. So don't overwrite this group context. So you got to do some thinking here and make sure you don't step on your own toes here 
or worse just you know overwriting stuff could really be time consuming to to get it back to normal okay so in this case i'm going to go ahead and overwrite it but again just recognize that you when you start doing dependencies and all this and you start overwriting you got to be make sure your the values you have in there are what you really want when you overwrite them okay so i'm going to finish here now it finished let's go look at that and see what it looks like well it should say 1500 because it used to be 1433 oh it's 1500 just like i said so this is something that you can really get in trouble with so be careful when you go to overwrite on your import okay this last scenario i want to discuss actually has to do with versions so basically let's say i have a job that has four different versions of it for example copies right here if i say open another version it has four different versions so what happens when you export this job does it export the versions does it not export the versions or do you get to choose what versions well let's see so i'm going to go ahead and export so I'm going to say um, export items and I'm going to go ahead and say copy zip. I'm going to export the dependencies and I look down here. I don't see the versions. I see a bunch of stuff. I see my checkbox, but I don't see versions. So I'm not sure yet what's happening. So let's say finish. Okay. And let's jump over to the other project. Okay, here we are in the other project. Um, let's go ahead and bring it in. So I'm just going to do an import items. Select. Get the routine. Docs. Copies. Aha, there's our versions. So it did copy. When it exported, it doesn't tell you it's going to copy the versions. But it does copy the versions. Now the question is, do I want to bring the, question, the copies, those extra versions in to uh, my new one? Well, let's say yes. Okay. Why not? Let's live. Let's live dangerously. So overwrite existing. Sure, you don't have to in this case. I don't think there's going to be any case problem. But uh, oh, let's go ahead and just say finish without overwriting. So we must say finished. Okay, now let's look over here. Here's our copies. Let's get another version. We should see all our versions. Sure enough, we do, and that's how versioning works. And when you do your exports and imports. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you see more of my videos. Thank you.